it's a full moon, so I would advise you stay inside because outside there's something on the prowl and it's something that might soon be scratching at your door. Here are 19 reasons to read Cycle of the Werewolf. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave Musson, at Dave Musson on Instagram. And here on my YouTube page, I'm continuing my journey through the chronology of Stephen King, taking each book at a time and giving you 19 cool reasons about each one that just underline why you simply have to read them. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in more of, do feel free to check out the rest of my videos on my page and go ahead and subscribe too so you don't miss any future ones. There are plenty of book episodes here already and a few specials too, including my recent Ultimate Guide to the Dark Tower. In this video, we're on to King's second book of 1983, Cycle of the Werewolf. It's a tale of a quite terrible year for the little main town of Tarka's Mill. So without further ado, let's jump into those 19 reasons to read this book. And as always, there is a potential for a few spoilers ahead. So one of the most fascinating things about this book is that it started life as a calendar. No, really, a calendar. King was approached by the young publisher Christopher Zaviza at the World Fantasy Convention in 1979, pitching him the idea of teaming up with illustrator Bernie Wrightson and King writing a short vignette to accompany every illustration that Bernie did. King, who was drunk at the time, liked the idea and his mind immediately jumped from calendar to lunar cycles to, obviously, werewolves. And from that, Cycle of the Werewolf was born. Not only did the concept of the calendar story idea appeal to King, but so did the possibility of working with a smaller publisher. Just like he would later work with Hard Case Crime for a few books, he saw this as a way of keeping himself grounded because he was already getting embarrassed by just how many books he was selling so early in his career. Now it's worth noting that King takes some pretty wild liberties with the lunar cycle in this book, but it is something he notes and apologizes for in his afterword. King basically made each full moon line up with that month's holiday. So a full moon on Valentine's Day, a full moon on the 4th of July, a full moon on Halloween, etc, etc. It was something that he said was just too great to resist. And it works. So this was initially slow work for King. The 500 word limit for each vignette, which might have seemed like a good thing, actually he soon found stifling and the first few parts he just wrote here and there. The April section was done while on a flight that was supposed to be taking him on holiday to Puerto Rico, but ended up having to go back to New York. The May section was done on the subsequent rescheduled flight, and the June section was written during a delay at the rental car agency while King and his family were waiting for their holiday to start. But even at that point, with half of the story done, it felt pretty dead to King. He compared writing those first six segments to six pulls on a lawnmower cord when there's no gas left in the tank. What broke that hold was the July section, which King also wrote on that holiday in Puerto Rico. So the July section tells the story of Marty, our protagonist, and how he ends up surviving an attack from the werewolves during his own illicit 4th of July celebrations because the town celebrations have been cancelled because of, you know, fucking werewolves and how Marty manages to injure the werewolf and escape with his life. King completely blew the 500 word limit in the July section, but he did not care a bit. He had finally found his groove. By the end of that holiday, he'd also written the August and September pieces, and at that point, he knew it was actually happening. This was also the point where King realized he had to break it to his publisher that the calendar idea was, well, not going to work. Were they disappointed? No, actually, they seemed pretty pleased. It was almost like they wanted Stephen King to write a book for their tiny little publishing label all along. And who wouldn't want Stephen fucking King to write a book for their label? So it was first released as a limited edition hard copy in 1983 and each copy sold for just under $40. 
There was also a deluxe edition which was signed by King and Bernie Wrightson and was limited to 350 copies, 100 of which also included an original pencil sketch done by Wrightson and a separate portfolio of his work. I'm guessing those ones were expensive. So King never actually wanted this to be republished, but yeah, as if that was going to happen. It eventually got a trade paperback release in April 1985, and then in October of the same year, it got another release where it was bundled together with the screenplay for the movie Silver Bullet, which is based on this book, and was released under the title Silver Bullet. Okay, let's jump into the book itself. The story is pretty cool, and I'll come back to that later. But, oh God, do we need to start by talking about the illustrations from Bernie Wrightson. They are amazing, and they're so amazing that I'm going to give up a chunk of these 19 reasons simply to show you them. So I'm going to pick out some of my favourites, starting with, for this one, January. April. May. And my favourite, June. Just look at how vivid that yellow countertop is. He also did some amazing landscape scenes in black and white for each month, which are bleak and beautiful. I want to show you a few of those right now, starting with August. And while we're here, November and look at this. December. So on to the story itself, and despite it being the shortest novel that King has ever written, that didn't stop him being able to build a town and a sprawling list of characters. We know he's good at building towns already, don't we? And in this one, you really do feel like you are living and breathing the town of Tarkas Mill. So basically, we get a kill every month in this book, and some of them are gruesome. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I will just say that April with the kid and the kite and August with the cop and the claw, they particularly chilled my spine. So I already mentioned our hero Marty, a 10 year old disabled boy who is just about the only person who survives an attack by the werewolf. Not only that, he injures the werewolf when surviving that attack and injures him in a way that allows Marty to work out who the human behind the werewolf is later in the book. It's a very cool touch. The identity of the wolf itself is another cool point. I won't tell you who it is, but it serves as a fantastic twist and it really transforms the final act of this book. You go from simply seeing people being ripped apart each month to being on tenterhooks throughout the final few pages to see who will win out. So this book has some of the best character names that I think King has ever written. I'm going to read some of my favourites for you now, just so you get a sense of quite how amazing these names are. Bear with me. We've got Arnie Westrom, Clyde Corliss, Landa Neary, Elmer Zimmerman, and probably the best, Milt Sturmfuller. Milt fucking Sturmfuller. Lastly, special shout out again to Bernie Wrightson for not only making the werewolf look terrifying in his illustrations, but also giving him a damn peachy booty. Stupid sexy werewolf. There we go, 19 reasons for you to read Cycle of the Werewolf. Let me know what you think in the comments and do make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and the potential for more werewolf booty. I think you'll agree that this one was short, sweet and surprisingly sexy. Also do come and say hi on Instagram where I'm at Dave Musson and you can find in the description below a link to the song Stephen which is a song about Stephen King by my band Chapter 19 and it's actually been the background music for this entire video so you'll already know it's fucking awesome. You can find links to listen to it on Spotify and also check out the video elsewhere on YouTube which was a video we made that features more than 60 references to different King works over the course of the video. Why don't you go and see how many you can spot. Thanks as always for watching. We've got one more book left from 1983 and boy is it fucking bleak. Catch you later for that. Otherwise, take care and I'll see you soon.